right here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro CS3 and what I've just done is installed the Boris Blue 2.5 plugin into Premiere and I'm just going to show where you can access the plugin. So under video effects you see a category, a new category called Boris and the Boris Blue filters in there. And under video transitions again we have a Boris category where it can be found. Also under file new you see a choice called Boris Blue compositions for creating a composition clip, of sort of a blue generator. And here you see if I filter in the effect palette, it's a quick way to find the, the plugins. So here I've applied the filter to a, a piece of video, and you see it launches the Boris Blue windows by default there automatically. And rather than actually build an effect from scratch, I'm just going to kind of quickly try uh, an effect that I previously saved here into the library browser. And if I scroll through it, you see the full screen video sort of spins back and um, also a multi-tone filter animates onto the, the video as well. So here I have it. I've applied it back to Premiere and I'll just give it a little playback. Um, because it's using the video card to do the rendering, it's very fast rendering and gives you a decent real-time playback in a lot of situations. Um, so let me apply a transition to show how that works. So I select my transition and then hit the custom button in the effect controls window there. And again, here I have my, uh, my premiere video. Obviously the transition gives you the in coming and outgoing shots where the filter just gives you one video track. And let me apply that back to premiere. And here you see uh, I've got sort of a lens flare and a shatter going on. Um, to create that transition. So when he goes up for the dunk the basketball there, you get the sort of explosion-like effect. And I think just show another transition. Add something between these shots. And here I'll trim it a little longer, <clears throat> give it a little more duration. That's an advantage of having a single track transition. Uh, it's a little flexible to work with that way. And again, I think I'm just going to go um, preview a bunch of, uh, let's choose one of these effects. These presets here that ship with the product, this happens to be a series of effects where the camera, um, the Boris Blue camera pulls back from the outgoing shot and then sort of zooms into the incoming shot in the end to achieve sort of a seamless transition. And I'll go ahead and I'll choose this one. And this will give us a chance to uh, just take a quick peek at the 3D, some of the 3D environment in Boris Blue. And I've saved this workspace here that, that uses the um, a split view. You know, obviously you can have a quad split. Um, this is a dual, uh, a two-way split. Um, for the screen capture here, I'm working with pretty limited screen space um, to try and create this web movie. but. You can see as I scroll through, the camera pulls back from one um, sort of video frame there and zooms into the other one. And what I can do actually <coughs> is uh, if I just manipulate this middle keyframe where the, where the camera pulls back to, you can, you can see how I can sort of give it a, a, diff a very different animation um, just by changing that one keyframe. And uh, it'll it'll automatically um, animate back to where you want it to be for a transition, as long as you're only manipulating that. Leave the first and last keyframe alone. <coughs> um, here I'm in the lights tab. You see I grab this light, move it around, give you a sense of the sort of real time interactivity. Um, change it to a spot and grab my rotate interactor and move my spotlight around a little bit. You can even rotate it from the uh, from the target. Um, so blue among the Boris products um, has a sort of most advanced uh, 3D features and 3D user interface for quickly building um, powerful 3D effects. So here if I scroll through you see it kind of quickly got a nice um, nice 3D transition there. And finally, the, uh, another way you can 
used blue there is as a composition clip so I chose it from the menu there and in this case the composition clip does not directly reference any video from the <clears throat> from the timeline so I'm going to choose a preset that's just a piece of extruded text typing on there a nice 3d type on and I'm going to change the duration to four seconds rather than the default one second it's important to change it at, as you create the composition clip because the duration cannot be changed after that um, although there are ways to create a new composition clip using the same Boris effect settings if you if you needed to so it calls it Boris blue composition and puts it in the project folder after you hit apply and I'll just rename it there to 3d type on and just drag it into the timeline onto a separate video track and you can see the advantage of a uh, of a comp clip that way is it's just like a piece of media so I can um, you know I can move that to a different time have it span two different background clips I could use the premiere opacity and scaling and position controls to uh, to position that 3d title it's a uh, flexible for working with graphic elements like titles and unlike any filters in Premiere, um, you can of course save presets. So um, what I've done here, you can see the third folder down in presets says Boris Blue. I created my own sort of category of, uh, of presets. And let me just apply. Um, I think what I did in blue is I put on a multi-tone and a glow effect and just save that as its own its own preset. So that's yet another way to be able to access um, the blue plugin once it's installed in Adobe Premiere.